Thank you for listening to today's Veterans Christian Fellowship devotional Bible study. Stay the course by remaining in Christ. Please click the link in the description to read along, and be sure to look up and study the reference scriptures throughout. Our scripture reading today begins in 2 Peter chapter 2. I'll be reading verses 1-22 through 22 in the New International Version. But there were also false teachers among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. Yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not heap abuse on such beings when bringing judgment on them from the Lord. But these people blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like unreasoning animals, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed, and like animals, they too will perish. They will be paid back with harm for the harm they have done. Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed and a cursed brood. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Bezer, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These people are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them, for they mouth empty, boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity. For people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than to have known it and then turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. In yesterday's message, time is short, remove the veil and receive the light of life. We discuss the acknowledgement that no matter how long you live on this planet, life is short. The point was made that Satan is the great deceiver who leads people to believe that they have more time than they actually do. And that the key to making life count is in rejecting Satan's lies by embracing the truth of Christ. Jesus is the only path to perpetual fulfillment and eternal life as he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Even after accepting Jesus, Satan's attempts to deceive don't stop. The deceptions vary in type and severity and serve to either blow a believer's witness for Jesus through distractions and diversions or, if possible, lead them to believe in false doctrine wherein they would justify this ongoing sinfulness and spread it to other Christians. These practices serve Satan's will, not God's. So, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, how can we remain in His truth and identify the devil's scheme so that we can continue to live a life in God's will. We all come to know Christ through the Holy Bible. 
It is God's infallible word that was given for all to come to Jesus for repentance, salvation, sanctification, and eternal life. The Bible guides believers in following Jesus in all things. The Bible gives us everything that God has for us to know Him, His will, and our purpose. Therein lies the truth. In John chapter 8, verses 31-32, through 32, Jesus says, If you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. But the great deceiver wants you to believe in destructive heresies. The lies of Satan lead to a different gospel, heretical teachings, additional books, and religious practices that are not of God. Knowing the craftiness of the devil, the word of God even gives us a heads up regarding these matters. It says, The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings. They are given by one shepherd. My son, beware of anything beyond these. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is weariness of the flesh. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 4 Jesus said, Watch out that no one deceives you. In verses 24 through 25, Jesus goes on to say, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. These warnings continue in the Bible and are issued to followers of Christ. Jesus says that his chosen people, the elect, would even be susceptible to falling for Satan's deception. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3a, the Apostle Paul says, Let no one deceive you in any way. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 14, he says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Speaking of deceitful people, Paul said, For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. In the end, the Word of God declares what serves his will and what is serving the will of Satan. Paul warns, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Thus, the stern warning from Christ in Matthew 7, verses 21-23. through not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Jesus immediately follows this warning, saying, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The truth of Jesus is the rock-solid foundation of our faith and salvation. Believers must avoid deception and remain in His truth in order to live in obedience to God's will. In John chapter 15, verses 4-6, through 6, Jesus says, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Failing to remain in the truth of Jesus leads to falling away and results in destruction, while remaining in Him leads to a fruitful life. In John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus said that apart from Him, we could do nothing, but that if we remain in Him and His words remain in us, 
that we can ask whatever we wish and it will be done. This is because bearing fruit in Jesus' name as his disciple is to the Father's glory. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Remaining in Jesus every day is a life well lived as we fulfill our God-given purpose regardless of the time we have. Abraham Lincoln said, In the end, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. The maximum amount of life in your years is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers must commit to living our lives in Him and for Him, in obedience to His holy word and will. Thank you.